We have been studying about how the devil is the greatest imitator of the Lord Jesus Christ. In last week's Bible study, we had begun looking at how the devil counterfeits the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he, the devil has a counterfeit bride and uh, he, this is the counterfeit of the true bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have seen a lot of things about this counterfeit bride of the devil in last week's Bible study. We have seen that Jesus Christ has a bride which is a city and the devil imitates that and the devil has a bride which is also a city. In the book of Revelation chapter 17, we have seen some details given about the bride of Satan. She is called Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth in Revelation chapter 17 and verse 5. So we have seen the origin of this Babylon, which was built by Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord, the 13th from Adam. Not the 13th century from Adam, but the 13th man from Adam. And 13 is a number of rebellion. And Nimrod began this, this religion in Babylon. This religion called Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. We have seen some details about this Mystery Babylon. And we have seen how it is talking about the Roman Catholic Church. Now, this is not a fancy interpretation. This is not a private interpretation, but we are taking the truths of scriptures and we are looking at or examining the Catholic Church and we, and we are seeing that whatever is written about Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth is also true about the Roman Catholic Church. It is extremely important for Bible-believing Christians to see the true nature of the Catholic Church. Christians have forgotten that during the Reformation, the greatest enemy of the Church was considered to be the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church. Martin Luther would call or address the Pope as his hellishness and the Antichrist. And all the Reformers were agreed together that the Roman Catholic Church is the Antichrist. And that's because they found all uh, the characteristics of the Antichrist or the, the, the religion of the Antichrist in the Roman Catholic Church. But today, so-called Protestant Christians have completely forgotten their history. They have no clue as to what kind of a monster the Roman Catholic Church really is. They have completely forgotten about it. They look at the Roman Catholic Church as another denomination in Christianity. It is not. It is not at all another denomination. It is more than a cult. It is the bride of Satan imitating the true bride of the Lord Jesus Christ, Bible-believing Christianity throughout the last 2,000 years. So you must be very careful to know the true character of the Roman Catholic Church. And the Roman Catholic Church is indeed Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Begun by Nimrod in the Old Testament times after the flood, and it began, we have seen, as a mystery religion. Babylon means the gate of God and later God changed that name to uh, confusion because there God confused the languages of the people of the earth. So that was the name of that place. And we have seen that the character of this mystery Babylon is that it is a mystery. It is mysterious and secretive in all its dealings. Everything that is done is done under cover so that people will not know the true nature or character of this abomination. Uh, we have seen how it all began in the Pergamos church period. We have seen how the seven church periods can be identified by studying uh, Revelation chapters 2 and 3 and the letters that the Lord Jesus Christ wrote to the seven churches. We had already covered that in the last Bible study. And we have seen that the Catholic Church truly came into existence in the Pergamos church period from 325 AD to 500 AD when Constantine brought together the world and pagan religions and the church. And the outcome of this mixture is an abomination, the Roman Catholic Church. We have also seen the symbol of this woman, which is a golden cup in her hand. And we have seen what it signifies and what the Bible says about a golden cup in the hands of the woman. 
We have also seen a bit of the description given of this woman that she is a harlot and we have seen and spoken about the spiritual harlotry which is idolatry as it is especially found in the Roman Catholic Church. We have seen how Mystery Babylon worked in history. The Mystery Babylonian religion spread throughout the earth from Babylon it went to Egypt and from Egypt it went to Greece and then from Greece it went to Rome, Imperial Rome and we have seen how in Rome when uh, the, uh, this mystery Babylonian religion came to Rome the, the, the Pontifex Maximus who is the Emperor was also the Pontiff and so he was head of state and head of religion and under him was the whole Babylonian mystery religion connected with the state as well and we see exactly how it is to be found today in the Roman Catholic Church especially in the medieval times in uh, the Middle Ages we find that the Pope tried to rule the world and implement his religion or enforce his religion upon the people that he had conquered through different kingdoms Catholic kingdoms so we have also seen one very interesting thing that in the Old Testament you have the kingdom of heaven which is a literal kingdom which is a literal kingdom and we have seen how this kingdom of heaven in the New Testament has gone into mystery form and has become the kingdom of God which is a spiritual kingdom so the in the Old Testament is a literal physical visible kingdom in the New Testament it is a spiritual kingdom the kingdom of God in which we are all there by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and that's how God worked when Israel rejected Jesus Christ then God uh, moved to the Gentiles and the literal kingdom that was offered to the Jews became a spiritual kingdom which has been offered to the Gentiles as well what did the devil do he followed the same pattern and he imitated the Lord Jesus Christ and his kingdom from being an uh, from being imperial Rome became the Roman Catholic Church which is again uh, the mystery form of Rome the Roman Catholic Church is the mystery form of Rome this is mystery Babylon the Great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth once for all we need to settle the identity of this woman that John talks about in Revelation chapter 17 and we will do that by reading three verses we'll read Revelation chapter 17 verses 6 9 and 18 it says in verse 6 and I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus and when I saw her I wondered with great admiration so this woman is said to be drunken with the blood of the saints drunken with the blood of saints and martyrs of Jesus Christ saints and martyrs of Jesus Christ so that means this woman is responsible for the killing of born again Bible believing Christians and when John saw this woman he said uh, he was astonished the words there is are I wondered with great admiration he was shocked in other words when he looked at this woman because this woman called herself a Christian church and here she is drunken with blood of the saints and martyrs of Jesus Christ that's the first thing that you need to know to identify this woman secondly let us look at verse 9 and here is the mind which hath wisdom the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth so you have the woman sitting on seven mountains and I'm going to say a little bit more about these things shortly then in verse 18 and the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth note this very carefully this is a city and the city reigns 
over the kings of the earth. Do you know any city which is drunken with the blood of the saints and martyrs of Jesus Christ, which sits on seven mountains, and it is a city which reigns over the kings of the earth? There is only one city like that, <clears throat> and today it's called the Vatican City. And we are going to look at a little bit more about this identity and then move on to other things. In, if you study church history, true church history, not the false church history written by some Protestant Christians uh, who make it look like the Protestant Christians today have come from the Roman Catholic religion, that the Roman Catholic Church is the true continuation of the apostolic church. Now that's rubbish. Don't read such church history books. The apostolic period was from around, let's say, 33 AD is when the Lord Jesus Christ died and rose again. And John died in about 90 AD, let us say. So this is the apostolic age. In fact, if you go by the book of Acts, which covers the apostolic period, then it ends in around 62 AD with the death of Paul. But we are going to look at that later. But right now, I want you to see that this woman, which is the woman in Revelation chapter 17, is not a continuation of the true apostolic church. It is a continuation of mystery Babylon the Great. You must differentiate between these two things. And this woman has been drunken with the blood of saints and martyrs of the Lord Jesus Christ for at least 1500 years. And if you take up some really good church history books, you will see the true history of Bible believing Christianity and identify the Roman Catholic Church for what it really is. So the Waldensians, the Waldensians were Bible believing Christians. In Italy and uh, in France and they refused to submit to the authority of the Roman Catholic Church so what does the Catholic Church do it sends in its troops and wipes out these people men women and children these people lived high up in the mountains in the Alps and that's where these armies pursued them and killed them in their own homes for what reason for not submitting to the Roman Catholic Church, for not becoming members of the Catholic Church because these people did not worship idols. These people would not go into the Roman Catholic Churches. They did not acknowledge the Pope's authority nor did they acknowledge the priest's uh, authority over the laity or the common Christians. They, re they completely rejected the Catholic Church and what did they do? They killed them mercilessly for not submitting to their authority. I'm giving you just one example. The Waldensians were godly, Bible-believing Christians. They were very fervent in serving the Lord. They were soul winners. They were street preachers. They were evangelists, great Christians. And for only one mistake, that is that they did not join the Roman Catholic Church, they were wiped out, almost wiped out from the face of the earth. You have the uh, Albigensians, you have the Paulicians, you have the Bogomiles, you have so many other of these great Bible-believing Christians throughout church history. And one thing is common about all these people, that they were all Bible-believing Christians. In other words, they always stuck to the good Antiochian text of the Bible and they never acknowledged the Roman Catholic Church or its Bible, uh, which is the Latin Vulgate. They rejected that. They had their own Bible. And uh, it is the same as the King James Bible that we have today. And these Christians can be traced rise up, right up to the first century. Not only the Waldensians, but all these other groups that I have spoken about, their origin can be uh, traced to the Apostolic Church. So this is true Bible-believing Christianity. This is true Apostolic succession, not the Roman Catholic Church. And once you understand this, then you will see how the Catholic Church has been drunken with the blood of the saints and martyrs of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everywhere they went, this is what they did. 
and you read the history of the Reformation and you will see that the greatest physical enemy of the true church of Jesus Christ has always been the bride of Satan, the Roman Catholic Church. All you have to do is take up Fox's Book of Martyrs and read all seven or eight volumes and you will see the atrocities that the Roman Catholic Church has committed against the true church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I've been pointing to the Waldensians but remember that's only one example. There are hundreds of such examples, hundreds of such groups of people scattered throughout Western Europe and other parts of Europe. And the Catholic Church went after them relentlessly till they, uh, and persecuted them and almost wiped them out from the face of the earth until the time of the Reformation. Even here in India, the Catholic Church set up its infamous Inquisition in the city of Goa in western India. Francis Xavier came to India who was a part of the Society of uh, uh, Jesus that means they were Jesuits and the Jesuits one purpose was to wipe out Protestant Christianity and to wipe out all opposition to the Catholic Church and to bring the whole world to the feet of the Pope. That was uh, the purpose of the Society of Jesus or the Jesuit group in the Roman Catholic Church. And they came to Goa and they set up their inquisition there killing everybody who did not agree with them. They went down south to uh, the state of Kerala and there and even in Tamil Nadu they persecuted the Syrian Christians who have been there right from almost the third century AD in India they took their Bible they destroyed their Syrian text which is exactly like the text of the King James Bible they destroyed that and gave them their corrupt Latin Vulgate and said to them that from now on you're part of the Catholic Church and your liter uh, li uh, literature and liturgy should all be from the Latin Vulgate. That's what the Catholic Church does wherever it goes and when people do not submit to them they kill them. They are drunken with the blood of the saints and martyrs of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then you have the seven mountains uh, sometimes also called as the city of seven hills. City of seven hills is Rome and everybody knows that. Virgil said um, Propertius and Horace and many other ancient writers always said these things that Rome is the city of seven hills or sometimes called the city on the seven mountains. There is absolutely no ambiguity as to the identity of the city on seven mountains. It is Rome and in Rome you have the Vatican City which is an independent city state church and that is ruled by the Pope. It's got its own army, it's got the Jesuits, it's got its own bank. You should read uh, the book called The Vatican Billions by Avro Manhattan or you should read any of the books by Jack Chick written on the Roman Catholic Church or by Eric John Phelps on uh, the Vatican Church and its conspiracies. The book is called The Vatican Assassins. The Vatican Assassins and it's a very good read. You should read these kind of books and you will know the true nature of this city which is set on seven hills or seven mountains and it is nothing else but the Roman Catholic Church. Just as Jesus Christ has a bride which is a city and a church, the devil has a bride which is a city and a church. You examine every practice, every belief and doctrine in the Roman Catholic Church for the past 1500 years and you will see that they are all related to mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations. They all come from Babylon. They don't come from the scriptures. Like I've said during the time of Constantine, they brought together the mystery Babylonian pagan religion and mixed it with Christianity and the outcome is this monstrous woman, mystery Babylon, which is the Roman Catholic Church. The Catholic Church hates the King James Bible and the Catholic Church hates Protestants. The Catholic Church has done a lot of things to destroy the King James Bible because that has been the greatest attack of God's people against the Catholic Church to bring out the pure word and words of God in the English language which is the universal language of the last days. And in, after the Reformation began under, Rome, uh, under Martin Luther in Germany, the Catholic Church responded by having its own counter-reformation. It started with the Council of Trent in 1546 
and of course that was many sessions and there they declared Protestants anathema that is they are cursed and once the Society of Jesus was formed the sole purpose of this society of the Jesuits was to annihilate Protestant Christianity and to destroy the pure text of the Holy Scriptures which is in the English language the King James Bible so how did the, the Roman Catholic Church work firstly it went after the King James Bible for almost two to three hundred years the King James Bible had borne great fruit in the whole world. Missionaries, great preachers, evangelists went out throughout the world preaching the gospel. All the dark continents of this world were uh, saturated with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ through the work of these great missionaries and evangelists and preachers. So the Catholic Church decided to destroy the, the, the foundation of Protestant Christianity which is the King James Bible which is the Reformation text so what did they do when they could not directly attack it and destroy it they infiltrated the Protestant Church and they brought their own text into the so-called translation committees of the new versions and they brought in their Roman Catholic text which is the Vaticanus and Sinaiticus and Alexandrians all these kind of things they brought into translation committees and the result were new versions which agreed with the Roman Catholic Bible and no longer agreed with the King James Bible and their work was so thorough their work of infiltration and their work of brainwashing was so thorough that even today born again Christians think that the King James Bible is wrong and the Catholic based modern versions are all right that's the extent to which the Catholic Church has done damage to the true church of the Lord Jesus Christ but after it did that it started controlling and corrupting Christians Protestant Christians remember it hated the King James Bible and it went after it and tried its best to corrupt it and it certainly succeeded in making Protestant Christians believe that the new versions are better than the King James Bible the second thing it did was to try and corrupt the doctrines and practices of born again Christians now in this connection I would like to speak to you uh, we have been talking about the counterfeit bride and the Catholic Church which is the Vatican Church but now I would like to talk about a, a little bit about the charismatic movement and its connection to the Roman Catholic Church many Christians don't see this that the charismatic church is totally controlled if not totally to a great extent the charismatic church is controlled by the Roman Catholic Church so in these two ways that is through attacking the King James Bible and corrupting the doctrines of Christians the, the Roman Catholic Church tried to take its revenge on Bible believing Christianity when it could not do it by force remember till the Reformation took place this city reigned over the kings of the earth literally all the kings and emperors who were mostly Roman Catholic in Europe would submit to the authority of the Pope and he would sit on his throne and dictate to the kings and to the emperors as to what they should do so directly or indirectly this city on the seven mountains reigned over the kings of the earth but you see the Protestant Reformation dealt a solid blow to the Roman Catholic Church and it almost brought it to its end but since it is the bride of Satan it has not yet died because its time has not yet come as we will see shortly so what does it do it infiltrates Bible believing Christianity and tries to do two things tries to take away its Bible and tries to destroy its doctrine and today we're going to see how it has succeeded in destroying the doctrines of Bible believing Christianity and so we will look at the connection between the charismatic movement the charismatic church and the Roman Catholic Church firstly let me give you a few examples of what charismatics uh, charismatic preachers and liberal preachers have been saying about the Roman Catholic Church let me quote what Benny Hinn said about the Roman Catholic teaching he said there are more people getting healed in the Catholic Church than in Pentecostal churches because the Catholic people revere the Eucharist 
For us, it is symbolic, but Jesus never said, this is symbolic of my body. He said, this is my body. Miraculous, powerful stuff going on in Catholic churches. You should check out Father Macri on YouTube. You will see miracles you can't believe. It will blow, blow your brains off in a good way. I met this amazing man. He touches people with his cross and they get healed. These are the words of Benny Hinn, the charismatic faith healer. Does this man have any idea what he's talking about? He's saying that God is doing more miracles of healing in the Catholic Church because they believe in the Eucharist and because they believe that uh, the wafer that the, that the Roman Catholic priest holds in his hands and that cup of wine are the literal body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says because they believe that God is performing miracles and he's endorsing the Roman Catholic teaching about the Eucharist which is unbiblical nonsense. Can you believe that? And this is Benny Hinn doing that. He has no idea how many English reformers had given up their lives. They were burned at the stake by the Roman Catholic Church because they refused uh, to, to acknowledge the Roman Catholic teaching on the Lord's Supper. They refused to say that the Roman Catholic Church is right on this. The reformers, most of them at least, in England especially, believed that the Lord's Supper is only symbolic. That the wine and the bread are not the literal body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they were burned at the stake for that. And this guy, Benny Hinn says, because they believe that, God is blessing them and performing more miracles there. Look at what Rick Warren says. Rick Warren is the guy who wrote this very popular book called The Purpose Driven Life and The Purpose Driven Church. Of course, it's, it's nonsense. It's full of uh, anti-biblical literature. That's what that is. You must be careful about Rick Warren as well. And Rick Warren says, Catholics do not worship Mary. If you love Jesus, we are on the same team. Now he says, the unity we are talking about is not a structural unity. It is a unity of mission, of mission. The unity between the Roman Catholic Church and the Protestant Church is, one, is not one of structure, but one of mission. That's where we have common ground is what he's trying to say. But just think about what he's trying to say. He's saying that the Roman Catholic Church and the Protestant Church have the same common mission. How can it be? What is the mission of the Roman Catholic Church? It is and it has always been to bring the whole world to the feet of the Pope. So that the Pope would be the spiritual and temporal uh, ruler of this world. It, it is the city that reigns over the kings of the earth. Never forget that. And the mission of the Catholic Church has always been to bring the world to the feet of the Pope. The Reformation had dealt a solid blow to the Roman Catholic Church. So that, as I've said, from the time of the Reformation, the Roman Catholic Church tries to reign over the kings of the earth, not, uh, not directly like it used to do in the Middle Ages, but now so very subtly by infiltrating nations, by infiltrating governments, by infiltrating the educational system of countries. They try to bring whole nations into their control. Now you, will, you, you may find it difficult to believe this, but if you do a little bit of research, you will see that the Jesuits, the Roman Catholic order called the Jesuits or the Society of Jesus, have their hands in all the affairs of the governments of the nations of this earth. And that is the truth. They try to bring a nation to its feet through the education system and through the medical industry, as I like to call it. They use these things and then, of course, politics ultimately to bring a nation into its control. And Rick Warren says that the mission of the Catholic Church and the Protestant Church is the same. He must be blind to say that. He cannot see at all. So you have many charismatic preachers preaching these kind of things. I've just given you two examples. Uh, by the way, this guy Rick Warren goes on to say there are more things common between us than differences. What can be common between the Catholic Church and the Protestant Church and their mission? This woman is drunken with the blood of saints. 
This woman uh, who sits on the seven mountains tries to rule the kings of the earth and bring nations under its control. The Protestant church has never tried to do that. Yes, there are some, uh, some countries where the Protestant church is uh, the state church following in the footsteps of the Roman Catholic Church. It's true, but there have always been failures later on. The true Bible-believing Christianity had n never had anything to do with government and politics. Yes, they would submit to the government. There is no doubt. That's because the scriptures command them to do so. But otherwise, they would never meddle with politics. Their mission was always to go and preach the gospel of the grace of God to a lost and dying world. They never spread Christianity like the Roman Catholic Church did with the sword, like Islam does. Islam tries to spread its religion by the sword, according to the words of Muhammad. And that's exactly what the Catholic Church does. It would try to bring nations under its control by hook or by crook. Now here in India, there is an accusation against Christians that we engage in what is called forced conversions. You know, the people are so brainwashed here, they think we are guilty of this so-called forced conversions. What do they mean by that? They say, you go to the poor people, you, give, you Christians go to the poor people, you give them food and shelter and all sorts of things, you give them medical care and education, and with all this, you force them to convert into Christianity. But you see, that's exactly what the Roman Catholic Church had done. And sad to say, that's exactly what charismatic Christians are doing here in India today. No doubt the non-Christians of India accuse us all of being guilty of forced conversions. By the way, when the Roman Catholic Church came to India in the 16th century, uh, the, you know, when the Jesuits came and as I've said, Francis Xavier came and along with him, a bunch of Jesuits came here to India and set up their inquisition. Then they engaged in forced conversions a lot. They would convert whole communities of poor fishermen and baptize them and say, now you're all Christians. Now you have to attend church and learn our catechisms and do all sorts of nonsense here in India. And because of them and because of what the charismatics are doing today, Bible-believing Christians are grouped along with them and accused of forced conversions. And Rick Warren says, the Catholic Church and Christians have the same mission? No. The Protestant Church's mission has to be to evangelize the world. They send missionaries to preach the gospel of the grace of God. And once it is preached, the decision is left into the hands of the people. You want to believe in Jesus after what we have preached? You are free to believe. If you do not want uh, to believe it, then you are free to reject it. You are a free man. How can I force you to believe in something against your will? But because of the bad things done by the Catholic Church and charismatic Christians, other Christians also are labeled and accused of forced conversions. Here I'm talking about in India. And Rick Warren says the Catholic Church and we have a lot of things in common. What are those things? Well, if he's talking about the Trinity and uh, belief in the Lord Jesus Christ as death and resurrection and the, 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 the gospel story, then, well, the same things are found in Mystery Babylon the Great. So you can never be sure whether the Roman Catholic Church took these doctrines from the Bible or from Mystery Babylon. And I think the latter would be true. It almost looks like there is a great effort by charismatic preachers to lead their flocks back to Rome. And this trend is very, very evident today. You go on YouTube, you check out the videos of some of the most popular charismatic faith healers, not just Benny Hinn or Kenneth Copeland, uh, but there are so many others, scores of other preachers, always praising the Roman Catholic Church, always making it look like the Protestants are, are guilty of dividing the Roman Catholic Church, as if we are a part of that Catholic Church and we have been severed off by the reformation and it is our duty today to go back to the mother church which is not the mother church to us it is actually the mother of harlots and abominations but these these charismatic preachers are guilty of leading millions of charismatic christians astray in the subject as they do in the subject of 
healings and tongues and other things. They are leading Christians back to Rome. What do you understand by that? The mother of harlots has its hands in the charismatic movement. And it is trying its best to shape it and mold it after its own image. And uh, in the process destroy the souls of millions of innocent people. What a sad thing. Christians, you need to awake. You need to see the connection between the charismatic movement and the Roman Catholic Church. If the Roman Catholic Church is the mother of harlots and abominations in this world, then the charismatic church would certainly be its offspring. Every other cult in this world would be its offspring. Because that is the mother. So there, is, there are really only two faiths or two religions in this world. One is that of the Bible, if I may call the Christian faith a religion for a moment for us to understand it. Let us say Christianity is a religion. Then true Bible believing Christianity is there which can be traced right back to the apostles. And I'm talking about true apostolic succession, not the false counterfeit apostolic succession of the Roman Catholic Church. So there is true Bible believing Christianity and then there is Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, which would include every cult and every religion in this world. That's the mother. Everything else is her offspring. So is the charismatic movement, especially when the charismatic preachers have these hundreds of thousands of people following them and they never preach the gospel of the grace of God. They never preach against sin. They never preach uh, anything that would caution these, uh, but the, uh, these followers of theirs to be wary about the Roman Catholic Church and its doctrines, its teachings, its practices and what it does to bring the world to its feet. They never preach against any of these things. And it's very sad to see that these charismatic preachers are paving the road to Rome so that they could lead millions of souls into hell.